What exactly are sole ulcers? How do you treat them and why are they such a massive feature of lameness in dairy cattle? Well, let's find out, find out what to do about them and find out how you can prevent them. Okay, so here's a quick step-by-step -step on how to routine trim cattle to prevent ulcers. So, you trim the inner cloth about 75mm, depending on the size of the cow, it can vary. And the sole should be completely flat with about 7mm thick at the end of the toe. Then make the outer claw match the inner claw. So height should be the same, length should be the same. Then dish out the inner portion of both of the claws, which we call modelling. You can see me doing that right now and then investigate any problems and relieve the weight from those problems. There's a little one on that inside claw there, so you can see me just fishing that out. After that, remove any remaining loose horn and fissures around the heel. And you're done. Perfect routine trimming. So, we can routine trim now, but what's actually going on inside the food? Well, here's a diagram of the internals of a cow's food to explain why routine trimming works to prevent ulcers. So that top bone is P2 and the little bone is the navicular bone. That triangular bone that's just dropped in is the pedal bone and here's the source of all of our problems when it comes to ulcers. That triangular bone pushes down at the back part of the bone where that arrow is pointing down onto the digital cushion which is the red part of the diagram. Now every time the cow steps that back portion of the pedal bone pushes down and squashes the digital cushion, eventually resulting in bruising, which then leads to ulceration, which can protrude out through that brown portion of the diagram, which is the sole, which we refer to as an ulcer. Now, routine trimming pairs away at the inside of the axial wall, which you can see me doing in the background, and levels out weight bearing between the two claws, so it reduces that pressure that was shown by that blue arrow pointing down through the sole. As you'll see from the clip in the background, we pair the front feet in exactly the same way as the back feet. The only difference being the inner claw is the dominant one, so it's usually the one we're relieving the weight from. So here's a routine trim on a later lactation cow. She's probably in her fourth lactation and as you can see she's had digital dermatitis at some point. That baldy bit gives it away. She's got um, some bruising on her outer claw. You can just see me paring away that as deeply as I can without letting it go too soft. I've had to actually reduce the medial claw, the inner one, because she had so much loose horn which is obviously part of our five step method. This cow should be good to go and shouldn't have any limbless issues going forward. This back right claw is showing signs of a very early on ulcer. So it's past the stage of bruising, I would say, and turning into an ulcer. I've reduced that heel height to take the weight bearing off that dominant claw and put it onto the medial. You can see I've not touched the medial heel at all. And I've given it a good wide model which will reduce the weight bearing on there and let her heal. So I've just trimmed this cow and I've noticed obviously there's bruising here right about the typical site and um, I haven't finished modelling so I will model this out more to make sure there's less weight on there but I just wanted to point out that this here is not bruising or a problem of any type it's just pigmentation exactly the same as she has on her skin 
there's no difference in the quality of horn, so you don't need to trim it at all, just leave it. So, sole ulcers, they're essentially brought about by uneven or poor weight distribution between the two claws, either on the front feet or the back feet. Now, routine trimming can completely get rid of these ulcers and become a non-problem as long as it's rigu rigorously carried out over a period of a year. When I start new farms, it is usually about a year before they seem a, see a dramatic turnaround in levels of lameness. When we routine trim, returning the feet to natural proportions, so 50-50 weight bearing between the two claws, alleviates the stress that's put on the outer claw on the back feet and the inner claw on the front feet. Now what's actually happening inside is there's a triangular bone called the pedal bone and if there's too much weight on one claw that pedal bone is pounding down on the quick or the corium which is the same thing and eventually leads to bruising which eventually turns into an ulcer. So bruising and ulceration are basically the same things but to different degrees. When we trim out and there's sole bruising we're not trimming the bruising away to get rid of the bruising itself we're actually trimming away to help reduce the pressure on that spot of the foot. So it's the pressure relieving that matters, not the removal of the stained or discoloured horn. If your foot trimmer is trimming your cows the way I've shown you in this video, and you continue to do it throughout the course of, say, a year, then you will see a huge difference in your cattle's lameness problems. But why do dairy cattle, specifically dairy cattle, suffer from these problems? Well they're pushed and pushed to produce larger quantities of milk which makes an unnaturally large udder which leads to poor um, posture in the back legs which leads to uneven weight distribution. Also we're looking for higher proteins in our milk which means that protein is fed to our cattle in higher quantities than what they would be fed in, in the wild in nature. And this protein matters greatly because horn, as well as hair, is completely made up of keratin, which is a th synthesized protein from the protein that is in their diets. So the more protein we feed, the more horn is produced, the greater the uneven distribution of weight. Also that coupled with cows in housing, the cows aren't wearing down their feet as much as they would say in the wild or as a, in a grassy based system for instance. So that excess protein which has now turned to horn also isn't being worn down so you've got a cumulative um, sort of scenario of all these different things which are coming together to create the perfect storm which produces ulcers. But we can completely alleviate that as I said and reduce lameness from ulcers down to one or two percent in the herd. You will always get some ulcers because um, obviously all cows are different, same as humans are all different and our bone structures within the anatomy of the cow will vary between cow to cow, breed to breed. So you will get incidences of ulceration but you can drastically reduce them just by routine trimming. So I routine trim, I dry off, cows at 90 to 100 days post calving and then again about 150 days after that if they've not been touched. Okay, um, any questions, any comments, please comment below, please hit the subscribe button and cheers for watching.